Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Monday, September 25th, 2023. And our top story today, prudent practices for evaluating and implementing retirement income solutions. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, John Faustino is with Broadridge and Blaine Aiken is with Fiduciary Insight. Blaine, John, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks for having great us. Great to be here. Yeah, John, it's always great to see you. And, and we've talked about so many different items with you, things with you. Let's talk about retirement income solutions. And we're going to get in more detail with yourself and Blaine. But have you seen interest among advisors, plan sponsors really peak in terms of their interest in these types of products? I'd say that we're seeing some increased interest. It hasn't necessarily peaked yet. We're seeing some great activity from some of the leading retirement plan advisors in the space. And I think they're, they're really going to pave the road for the industry and for their peers. So there have been several events that I've been a part of where leading retirement plan advisors, the folks that are on the forefront of changes, have really embraced retirement income because they realize that it's an opportunity for them to do the right thing for their plan participants. And it's also a business development opportunity for them. So I believe that there's going to be a shift in plan design. There's going to be more plans, uh, plan sponsors and, and participants in, in surveys are expressing an increased interest in retirement income. There's a lot that has to be done kind of where the rubber meets the road to effectuate the use of those offerings. So I'd say the interest from advisors is coming, but there's um, there's a, a small group of, of advisors that are leading with their conversations with plan sponsors and also with their discussions with the industry, letting us know what we need to do to, to better support them in those discussions. Blaine, very nice to meet you. Thanks so much for joining us. John highlighted from his perspective that there is growing interest from within the retirement ecosystem uh, I want to get your perspective. You talk to a lot of plan sponsors. How engaged are they in your meetings in terms of talking about retirement income solutions? Right. Well, I, I agree with John. I think it's a, a work in progress in a lot of ways. Uh, I would think of it as being uh, maybe four stages in this where there's an awareness level and then there comes to a better understanding and then actually getting down to evaluating solutions and then finally to implementation. And based on the as studies that I've seen, primarily industry studies, uh, I would say that we've uh, we ha we're at the uh, awareness stage among plan sponsors in particular. I think they have uh, an awareness that this is an important thing uh, for them to include in plans. Uh, with respect to uh, the the actual uh, understanding level. I would say we're maybe at half uh, of, of uh, the plan sponsors are are truly looked into this enough to have a relatively robust understanding. Um, in evaluation, you know, it's probably significantly less than that uh, yet. They're uh, roughly, as I say, I've seen from studies, uh, probably 15% of plan sponsors are actively engaged in, in evaluating retirement income solutions. Uh, but I think uh, we're only at about 10% uh, of the plans actually have those in effect. So uh, we're getting there. Uh, and I think we are going to have a fairly rapid acceleration in the process of uh, adoption. You, you had the SECURE Act uh, come in, which certainly helps eliminate some of the regulatory uncertainty. Uh, we're seeing a lot of product development on which I know we'll be talking about. And, and as we say, just a greater growing awareness and uh, and a recognition that it's such a critical part of, uh, of a defined contribution plan. Yeah, absolutely. And John, I want to pivot back to you because Broadridge created a retirement income consortium, bringing together some of the most uh, prestigious firms that deal and work with uh, retirement income solutions. How important is it to be able to aggregate and analyze all the data? I mean, John uh, Blaine pointed out, John, that it's really important to evaluate. So how important is this consortium to being able to do that and bring all that data together? That's a, that's a great question. And yes, we, we created the Retirement Income Consortium in early 2022 is when we started our meetings. And we, we recognized at Broadridge that there was a need to create a consensus on the language that we use when we talk about these solutions and the way that we talk about due diligence for these solutions and the way that we compare these solutions. 
So I do believe that it's important for the industry to come together and those firms that were on the forefront of starting the consortium with Broadridge, large asset managers, large insurers, um, Blaine's organization, and, and a few others realized that a rising tide is going to lift all ships. And that's, that's what I believe we're, we're starting to see right now. So the consortium has helped with education. Blaine has talked about the, the fact that we've done a, um, we, we've made some progress anyway with advisor education and plan sponsor education. We still have a, a longer ways to go, but a lot of that was around uh, common nomenclature, understanding what these offerings are, how you do due diligence on them. Another thing that the consortium did is that we developed prudent practices for retirement income solutions. FI360, which was an acquisition by Broadridge, has a legacy of creating prudent practices for financial advisors, helping them evaluate solutions uh, in retirement plans and outside of retirement plans. So those prudent practices serve as a, a, a blueprint for advisors that want to consider retirement income solutions and to help them with what they should think about when they're implementing them, where they're warranted. So the consortium, from, from my perspective, has um, hit the mark in terms of the goals that we set for the last couple of years. And, and we're setting new goals going forward here. But I do think that the industry agreeing on what makes sense from a nomenclature standpoint, from a due diligence standpoint, is critical to getting advisors aligned with these offerings. Yeah, and Blaine, just before we go to commercial break, I want to ask you, you brought up evaluation. What's really important when you evaluate these different products? Because they're, they're very unique. I mean, you could have two insurance companies with similar types of products, but you know, maybe they're constructed differently. Maybe there's different liquidity provisions or termination provisions or payout provisions. So what go, what's important when you consider evaluation? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, huge, uh, it's a huge role to play. Uh, for the fiduciary to go through a prudent process. And as John indicated, you know, putting together those uh, 10 prudent practices uh, for the retirement income solutions was really important because it does uh, lay it out in a blueprint uh, type fashion. And uh, you can think of it, it's, they're actually structured to be very similar to the uh, Broadridge FI360 prudent practices for investment fiduciaries as a whole. So you, you really have to uh, organize, formalize, implement, monitor. That's kind of a quality management system uh, to have a completely prudent process. And in the, it starts really with the plan sponsor and even looking at, you know, what might be the plan sponsor's business reasons for wanting to get retirement income solutions uh, in the picture. And so, for example, uh, there there is evidence that the retirement income solutions can be helpful in attracting and retaining talent. So that decision could be made directly by the plan sponsor as a settler decision to uh, to get us started. And then from that point, you've taken a little bit off the shoulders of the fiduciary committee in, uh, and understanding then that, hey, they've got this mission to uh, have retirement income solutions in the process. And that's when they really start to kick in on the due diligence processes where you look at the participant pool, uh, you see might, what might be the demographic profiles and uh, decide on the type. You know, Do they want a guaranteed insurance-based solution? Would they rather have an investment-focused solution or a hybrid uh, solution? And then uh, from there, it proceeds on down through the kind of the classic uh, due diligence uh, criteria that you you would identify and how to look at the provider, uh, then how to look at the specific product, and all of that's in the context of the com uh, context of the competitive marketplace to make sure that you're serving the client's best interest. Yeah. Well, Blaine, John, I need to take a very quick break. We got to pay the bills. When we come back, we'll talk about where exactly do retirement income solutions fit in to the quarterly fiduciary meetings. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. 
We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. Blaine, John, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Great to be with you. Yeah, it's this is a fun conversation. And, and Blaine, I want to start with you because Secure, you mentioned Secure already, Secure 2.0, we got fees, we got the part of the normal process during investment reviews to go through fund performance. Where does retirement income solutions, the conversation, the topic fit in to those quarterly uh, plan sponsor review meetings? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, and I, I think probably a couple places to start on this. Uh, one in particular to recognize that these are a very long term holding. Uh, and so consequently, it's probably not going to be the hot topic on the quarterly agenda. It'll, it's more likely that it would be uh, maybe a focal point of one of the quarterly meetings uh, to be able to look at the competitive marketplace and see how the existing solution might stack up against uh, what is available out in the marketplace now, given uh, developments along the way and so forth. Um, but and certainly whenever that review takes place, you'll be looking at uh, fees, you'll be looking at product developments, you'll look at the participant profile to find out uh, how that all uh, fits and whether it's changed. Uh, but as I say, uh, it probably more that's a, a one-time event. One thing that I do think would be in the individual quarterly meetings is to look at the participant utilization, uh, because it's really so vitally important to make sure that those numbers are going up, that we get more and more people who have the benefit of that kind of uh, uh, service that's provided by the retirement uh, income solution. So, uh, and, you know, we know that the, there are oftentimes the retirement income solution, most of the time, would be in included in the qualified default investment alternatives. That's usually the best place for them to be. So you're liable to see uh, some real growth in there on a re regular basis. But by putting it in the quarterly meeting, uh, it adds emphasis to the fact that we want to pay close attention to uh, getting the numbers up because it is such an important part of the, of the picture overall. It is. And John, I mean, if you look at every survey from plan sponsor participants, financial wellness, financial preparedness, Retirement readiness are all the big, all at the top. How do we, you know, ours is kind of a glacial industry, like most. It takes time to change, but we're making progress. How do we move retirement income to the to the top of the list so that when we go into those meetings, it's right there at the top, and we're talking about it and and making change. Well, I think there's there's some things that have been done on the regulatory front that really help that cause. We live in a very polarized political world. Everybody knows that you can't get Republicans and Democrats to agree on too much. But one thing that they have agreed on is secure 1.0 bipartisan support in the House and the Senate. And that really facilitated the use of guaranteed income within plans. And then secure 2.0 had that same bipartisan support. And that facilitates more retirement plan access for those folks that are in those 50 and under employee companies. So the, the fact that the regulators uh, have done that, sorry, that the, the legislators have done that is really positive. The Department of Labor sees this as a, as a core focus as well. And then you've got industry that's really behind it too. Um, but one, one other big catalyst that I think we need to talk about here is the states. So Secure 2.0, Secure 1.0, that creates incentives, it creates opportunities to kind of grease the wheels to make it a little bit easier to include these retirement income solutions and to make them available to plans that maybe uh, are, are just gonna be starting up in the next couple of years. What the states have done is they have said, you need to have 
a retirement plan. Either you have to get into the state's plan or you have to start a 401k. And we're seeing that as a real catalyst. Um, that's really a bit of a stick. If you don't do this, you're going to get fined versus what we've done with Secure 1.0 and Secure 2.0, which are more incentive based. So we're seeing a lot of um, new 401k plans come into uh, Broadridge, Matrix, our custodian, driven by these state mandates. So I think that is bringing retirement income and, uh, and the like up on the agenda as folks are, are getting access to 401k plans, retirement plans that never had them before. And I think Blaine made a great point when he spoke about the not only getting um, access to these retirement income solutions in plans, but we also have to look at you know, what the percentage uptake is. And that's where I think aligning with defaults um, is going to be critical. One of the biggest things the industry has to do is to work on the record keeper, the platform availability. Um, we know that the plan sponsors are interested in this. Participants want more guaranteed income. But if these offerings aren't available on the record keeping platforms, you can't, you can't invest in them. So I think that's going to be another big step to facilitate broader access in the coming years. And then, Blaine, just to kind of pick up on John's thought, uh, thoughts, I should say, uh, there's clearly a need. We know that. And there's a desire and, and there's continuing to platform a lot of these products. How do we continue to build the momentum? Uh, and I just want to point out, there's a lot of talk now, not only about retirement plans, but also Social Security. So, you know, there, there's certainly a need here. How do we continue to build upon that and move towards more greater implementation and evaluation? Well, anytime we're talking about uh, the institutional marketplace and specifically the defined contribution plans, uh, you know, you have that uh, overriding ERISA fiduciary obligation. And the number one priority is to serve a client's best interest. When you look at that uh, marketplace of, of retirement plan participants, uh, overwhelmingly, their number one fear is that they'll outlive their income. And consequently, I don't see how we can argue that we have a real retirement plan in a, in a D.C. environment that focuses entirely on accumulation. Uh, you don't really have the, a true retirement plan plan until you look at the retirement income side and give uh, the participants the opportunity to truly uh, have the income that does last through their lifetime. Have, have to address that number one risk of uh, longevity risk. Uh, so consequently, I think that's uh, crucial. John alluded earlier to, I think, a key point, and that's the advisor uptake. I, mean, I think the advisor plays such a key role in helping sponsors understand the need and Importantly, the fact that the uh, the marketplace has certainly progressed to the point where these are now compelling um, products and services that you can be added and done in a much uh, more economic way and also in, in terms of the practical dimension, which again, uh, John mentioned. So you're, you're seeing the product developments, you're seeing the cost uh, reductions, you're seeing the high level of demand out there. Uh, and driven by the need. Uh, so I think all of those things are going to be key to kind of keeping the momentum as we go forward. Yeah, really good point. And John, I, I want to kind of wrap it, tie it up in a nice bow. The Retirement Income Consortium has done a lot of great work, but you're continuing to build. If I'm watching this program, I represent an organization that is not part of the consortium. How do I get, how do I get involved? We'd, we'd love to talk to anyone that's interested in retirement income. We um, are open to taking on new members if folks are interested in joining. And we collaborate with a lot of organizations that aren't members as well. So anyone that is interested in retirement income, what we're doing with the consortium, please reach out to me directly. I would, I would love to talk to you. Um, we've, we've got a long way to go. We've made great progress so far. And we're committed to helping the industry and helping participants get access to retirement income where it makes sense. So we're, we're all for talking to others that have those, those same incentives and goals. Yeah, well, uniformity and availability of data, certainly really key to success for the implementation of retirement income solutions. John, great to see you again. Blaine, great to meet you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you both back on the program again very soon. Thank you both. Thank you for having us. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place. One place. Check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. 
Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another great edition of VRNAM. We'll have another very special guest. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. Don't forget. Roll with the change. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.